Hello, Zero Gay fans. It's Trip 53 bringing you an exhibition match between Sackdoth and El Torero on Onyx Cauldron. Which is my new favorite map just because of how pretty it is. Also, it's actually. The design is really nice. I mean, just. Go over it briefly. I mean, we have the starting points in the bottom. in the northwest and southeast. It's actually a very large map. It's 18 by 18. For a 1v1, this is about four times as large as your typical 8x8 eight eight map. And it plays quite well. So you have. Starting plateaus at the southeast and northwest. Another set of plateaus that block off entrance to a fairly large set of mexes or me metal extraction points towards the southwest, as well as some water kind of blocking off points to the northeast. And the placement of hills around the side is kind of nice for spiders. The plateaus here would be handy for jumping bots. The water can be useful for amphibious bots and hovercraft. They actually go outside theoretically, though it would be really hard for them to do so. Amphibious bots would have some chance of being able to take advantage of this water. There's actually some depth to it. And the main factories, of course, can just go on the land. There are shallows that lead towards this section here, but the sheer amount of variety in terrain is very interesting. So I'd, I'd imagine it's going to be quite quite fascinating to see all the different strategies that come out on this map. So Sactoth is going for jumpy bots. We'll see how much he takes advantage of these plateaus. While El Torero is going for Light vehicles, which is a bit more standard on a map of this size and with this terrain. Though, given the amount of choke points, shield bots and click bots actually work decently well. Light vehicles, of course, work well as well. Of course, they, on a large map, the speed is a great advantage. But just the fact that there's a lot of room to maneuver gives bots some headway in there. Especially, of course, dealing with jumpy bots, which can just ignore the train almost entirely. But even then, these plateaus as we can see, can be walked on, even though jumping is a bit faster, they can be walked on, so bots do have those slightly sneakier routes that vehicles can't take advantage of. So, El Torero going out for very quick expansion, and also going out for a couple quick slashers, but nothing too major. It looks like he's just using those for defenses, not going out too much. Actually, not even using those for defenses. Using light vehicle turrets, light, light lasers for defenses, while Sactoth is... Also using a light laser turret, having no defenses in space, building quite a few pyros though. I'm guessing he, well, I have to guess, he is clearly going for a very quick raid. Pyros, very common to go for raids, they are great for that. Jump in, hit a few things, set them on fire and jump right out again. Or just jump, don't even jump in in the first place, just hit some things and jump out. However, getting distracted by the light laser turret is going to be a problem. That pyro, not able to get out in time, the slasher able to knock it out. However, there are more py unfortunately the pyro's in the air at the time, so this fire doesn't actually do anything. The death fire of a pyro... Handy feature when they die on the ground, which is normally most of the time they die on the ground. Sackdoth also going towards the north, but will be running into El Torero's commander, and that will not help at all. Well, El Torero scouting out Sackdoth, we'll see. Well, he already knows he's going for jump bots. We'll see just as much as he's expanded. Both players fairly even on expansion and continuing to expand. Both players will be just expanding as much as they can, trying to take their half of the map. And it looks like Sackdoth has definitely claimed at least laid more stake than El Torero on the southwest side of the map, while El Torero is getting the northeast side of the map. Given that Sackdoth is going for jumpy bots, it will be a lot easier for El Torero to hold the north than the south just because the plateaus aren't in the way. The water is basically even between vehicles and jump bots for what they can do, though jump bots could jump over these rivers here, while vehicles couldn't, they have to deal with it directly. And the Pyros, power doing it can, but the Slashers are set up too well, they really are the main defenses, even though Laser turrets are there. The slashers, if they can get into range and actually avoid the terrain itself, because they were being blocked by the hill. Very nice job by Sackdoth there, using the hill to great effect. Forcing the slashers out of position. However, the slashers are now in position, dealing with damage they can, and going down quickly. That will not last. Sackdoth getting his expansion going well. El Torero is continuing towards the north. Consulting what he can, setting light laser turrets. I... A little bit surprised he is going more for slashers. I would... Hmm, against jump bots like this, I can sort of see why, if you can keep them in position, due to their range and the fact that they can't hit them in the air while they're jumping. Levelers aren't a bad idea, though, given their speed. I... I almost think just to go for fast scrubbers and try to outmaneuver them. Because the thing with jump bots is that while they can jump a lot, they are... Even the pyros, the fastest unit... Well, okay, the fastest unit is the puppy, but they are a suicide unit. The fastest non-suicide unit is the Pyro, and they aren't that quick. The scrub, the slot, the slurs, the Scorchers, the Heat Ray unit, basic Raider unit for the vehicles, could just get around. So the idea would just be to avoid the Pyros entirely, so they can't catch up to you. 
I don't know if El Torero would do that. Doesn't look a wise idea. The levels could be good. Would else? The levels are also good. They'd be good for a quick direct push. Their fast fire weapon. Well, it's not so much the fast fire weapon as the splash damage that would help get rid of these pyros. Though. One isn't going to help too much. Having a large group would, of course, help, but then having a large group most things helps. Sackdoth, on the other hand, the Pyros will be doing him quite a bit of good. There isn't a whole lot of reason to change out of that, except maybe to put more stuff to consolidate his expansions. Given that no Scorchers are forthcoming, I don't see that as being a big threat. The Levelers are a bigger threat, and for that... Man, Jump Bots, well... He could go for Jax, because the Jax, being a melee unit, would force the Levelers to get their turrets turned around in order to hit them. Also causing the levelers to hit, possibly hit themselves with the splash damage while the jacks just tear at them with their giant spear. However, I think that Sackdoth is just going to continue going for Pyros. Keep pushing that while expanding towards the southwest and getting rid of everything that El Toro is trying to expand to the southwest and getting rid of all the units he's trying to use to secure that area. Pyro is doing a wonderful job getting rid of the units that have been built. It's kind of the reason I was concerned about levelers. Just because... Oh, not levelers. I mean, as a... As a group, levelers would probably be fine, but individually, as we can see, the pyros simply overwhelm them. And the slashers, as I mentioned before, a great idea because they can hit the pyros while they're jumping, if they're in position, but of course, used offensively, it's rather difficult to have them in position when the pyros appear. Having forward darts would actually not be a bad idea, though, because if you have forward darts, you see where the pyros are as he moves the slashers, and then get them in position. I'm a bit curious if... Does El Torero have radar at the moment? El Torero does have radar, but he doesn't see the pyros. He doesn't have it in position enough to see them. So his half of the map, however, he does know. The north half of the map, where everything is. Got a bit more radar coverage towards the south, or towards the east side of the map. Branching out south. While Sackdoth, on the other hand, has no radar coverage whatsoever. He's relying entirely on line of sight scouting. Which is a bit risky, but... Given that he is playing jump bots, he can just send in... Well, if he, was, if he had puppies, he could use them more effectively for line-of-sight scouting. However, he does not. He has the pyros. They are doing quite well for themselves. Three levelers coming in and slightly out of position to deal with the pyros. The pyros could easily flank them. One of the power Sorry. One of the levelers coming into position, coming out of position to attack the light laser turret, which is a very bad idea. El Torero just taking control of them to get him out of the way, but that leveler will go down. The other two levelers are also going in for an attack. They, they really shouldn't do that. There's not. There's no way they're going to get through this. I mean, the Pyros are moving out of position. They are going for a straight attack. But the Levelers wisely pulling back. One of them, no. One of them pulling back. The other one is also pulling back. So he is getting out of that. You, moving back to defend as these Pyros come in for an attack, which is a nicely timed attack given that El Torero is out of position. However, that being said, Sackdoth, like I said, his entire... Everything he has is undefended. A few Scorchers just going around the map would do wonders. Napalm Bomber could also help out, though I think that that would be attacking too infrequently to be useful. He is doing exactly that, however, going straight for the main base, trying to take out all of these windmills and take out the factory itself. While the Jump Bots destroy one of El Torero's expansions, not a big deal. I mean, El Torero is still behind in economy, 23 metal to 33 metal. But he is still doing quite fine for himself. That being said, Sackdoth is actually floating his metal quite a lot. While... Oops. And Sackdoth not getting any damage to his wind generators. Well, a couple of his wind generators, but not too many of them. His factory... Not very much damage at all. One-eighth health off. Still basically full health. More Napalm Bombers are coming for El Torero. But I still think the Scorchers would be a good idea, just for raiding... That, or set up more slashers in the main base, just defending as the pyros coming in. The levelers cannot really do too much, just given the position of them, but the slashers set up back here probably could hit those pyros. Hard to check the angle. Well, no, there's actually... There's quite a bit of obstruction in the way. Right now, they could, but it it is an advantage to the pyros, just these edge sections. Like I said at the beginning of the cast, these edges are quite handy for spiders, as well as jump bots, turns out. Levelers are doing it the cannon. Shadow taking out the last pyro in the hills. That was still a quite powerful harassment by Sackdoth. And Sackdoth, the biggest thing about this is... Welcome back, 0k fans. This is Cherry 33 Back with the same match I had before between Sackdoth and El Torero. I apologize. My computer is once again locked up. I have no clue what's going on. Really don't. I have a couple other things I could check. But... 
I may have to start replacing components. So if I do it... I don't think it'll get in the way of cast scheduling, but it might. So if I don't, if you don't see any casts for the next week or two, I haven't stopped. I'm just trying to repair my computer, and it's taken longer than expected. But bad news aside, let's go back to the game. So we start out. We saw Sackdoth go for jump bots on Onyx Cauldron, which, as I mentioned before, is very conducive to pretty much all movement types. Went along, did a nice harassment along the side, got rid of Elturero's expansion towards the south of his natural. However, Elturero going for air and did a really good job countering that. Sactoth has a sumo. I didn't even point this out. It didn't come up yet. Has a sumo coming in. This is pretty much the unit that Jump ba Bot Factory goes for. That's why you build it. Also getting a bunch of defenses along the center of the map. Just really trying to secure this choke point to his expansion down in the southwest. Very good idea. Anyway, the sumo is the unit you go for with Jump Bot. Jump Bot's factory is basically meant to set up to get yourself in a safe position where you can pump out a sumo or two and then use that to just crush your opponent's base after harassing them a bit. On the other hand, El Torero went for Light Vehicle, which is much more of a synergy-oriented factory, or at least much more of a spam levelers and ravagers and then win that way kind of factory. Those slashes do very well. All the units kind of work together pretty nicely. There's no real utility unit in that one. Both jump bots, there's a sumo. And you see that El Torero going down south he was expanding towards the north, going to the east side and south from there to harass Zaktos' expansion. Should be sending more units around to harass as well, but just the commander will do okay. And I should point out that he went for Commander Junior, which you don't often see, at least for skilled players, because the Commander Junior cannot be morphed. It's the commander that most new players get before you unlock any other commanders, and it's not one that can be morphed. So you don't, you don't have to worry about morphing it. It has a laser on its own, which is good because you actually need to morph into a laser normally, otherwise you have a pea shooter. While Sackdoth did go for a standard morphing commander, however he has not morphed it at all, he's just leaving it as normal. Let's get the game started again. So El Toro, like I said, harassing that east side of the map, while Sackdoth getting a sumo in, we'll have to watch that very closely. Also getting some more pyro harassment, however the sumo might be locked down by these stilettos, they are EMP bombers, which means they will be able to, well, will be able to disable the unit. I mean, the thing is, is that Sactoth has some, has quite a bit of resistance here. He has a couple EMP bombers which can lock this thing down, and then shadows which are meant for anti-heavy usage. A couple Scorchers coming up, so this is exactly what I was talking about before with Scorchers for harassment, though they appear to be here more for defense than harassment. And El Torero setting up on the east side of Sactoth's base, and Sactoth does have definitely an economic advantage, but he's... he is losing bit of his ground. Not a whole lot, but still a bit. And there we go. We see that Sactoth does have a sumo. Exposed El Toro is trying to stop it with EMB Bombers. And down it goes. It locked up. Scorch is coming in to help deal with it as it is locked up for 10 seconds. It probably won't go down. With enough Scorchers, it might. But it should be able to get up enough to push these away, or at least sloping them a bit. Mostly this unit works by jumping on things and killing them. The slow beam does deal damage, but it was taken out. Nicely done by El Torero. I haven't been prepared for heavy units. Seeing that he's fighting jump bots, he knows that that was going to happen, since jump bot factory typically goes for sumo, as we saw. Not enough harassment had been done in advance, so right now, anti-air units being built up for Sacknoth. Not a bad idea, though at this point, not sure if changing factors would be a better idea. Changing possibly... Sheesh, the amount of units being built up here. I think Jump Bot would probably just be too expensive for the amount of ground needing to be covered. Shield Bot might work pretty well. Going for Jack's try to harass this north section, or not, sorry, the east section north of his base. For factors which I'm not sure, I mean, Sackloth has been floating a lot of money at this point. He does not appear to have any additional factories, as far as I can tell. But he is getting a gunship plant. That's still kind of risky. A Black Dawn wouldn't be a bad idea. He has the money to afford it. He could go for it. It would get rid of these groups of units. On the other hand, the air there is a bit of a problem. The Gunship does have a new unit called the Trident that is meant for anti-air. But even then, it's going to be kind of tricky. El Torero coming in and setting up some shadows to get rid of this Jack. And has the Scorchers to get rid of the Archangels to clear the anti-air away. And now he is going... There he goes. He is harassing from the south side where Sactoth had not defended anything exactly what I'd hope to see. 
about five minutes ago, but still better late than never. While Ravagers are being set up as a main assault force, and Saktoth, having lost that sumo, that was a big loss, really. He does have this nicely defended position, but it's the Magino line at this point, and El Torero has taken full advantage of that. I, on the other hand, though, Saktoth has a lot of economy focused on his main base, and clearly a lot of caretakers focused on this jump jet plant, which is pushing out stuff faster than otherwise would be, but now that Saktoth has lost most of his economy, it's going to hold him back a lot, and that's... I don't think he's going to throw in the towel yet. He does have still some units, some production, but he's building Banshees, not getting Black Dawns, getting some Tridents for the Anti-Air, like I mentioned, but... He is still in the back foot. Given that he does he does have jump bots, he could still go for some harassment. He is try, uh, obviously trying to go for harassment towards the northeast, but like I mentioned, it's a bit harder for jump bots to get to this area here because the cliffs don't quite connect, and the rivers, they're just as accessible to vehicles as they are to jump bots, so El Torero can easily come around with that. However, I don't... I mean, the jump factory can work if he's built up the numbers for the pyros well enough, but it's just not gonna be enough on its own. I mean, he's just... He has to get rid of a mass of forces. And the best thing I can think of for doing that, if he's gonna stay with jump bots, would be getting some scuttles. But really, for cost, I'd say just go for shield bot and grab roaches. Like, shield bot, grab roaches, and then come in with thugs, because Life Eagles does have a bit of a problem with shields, because a lot of their units are rather... They have rather long fire times, and the shields are quite small, and Vehicles kind of depends on range a fair bit, as much as it does on speed. Shield bots can stay alive quite a while. So I could see that being useful, but I, don't, I do not see Sackdoth going for that. Actually, for a little while, shield bots were considered to be unbeatable by vehicles, but that's that's a bit of an overstatement. They are a bit tricky to fight with vehicles, but vehicles can, of course, might just be sent under the shields, micromanaged like that, and that can help take them out. The use of gunships isn't a terrible idea, though. The Banshees are going to be a hard thing for the Scorchers and... Actually, impossible thing for the Scorchers and Ravagers to deal with on their own. The Ravagers will not be able to hit them just because they're moving too fast. I don't think the Scorchers have the range to hit them. They might. Now, with Avengers coming in, that is going to be something. That being said, Sackdoth wisely keeping his gunships near his air defenses. Moving them out, however, he doesn't have his Trident in place. Where is that Trident? That Trident is over to the east side of the... Or was over to the east side of the map. It got destroyed from the looks of it. Not helping out his Banshees. Very bad move. He needs to get that Trident in there to help them out. The Chainsaw here is doing a decent job. Not the best job, though, trying to get rid of the Avengers. They are moving too quickly. Some of them are getting hit, but most of them are moving too quickly to be dealt with. However, the Massive Banshees is still doing a decent job. Having too much of them just to be hit by anything that's not splash damage, and there isn't really anything that... Well, Eltro would need to get... A Cobra, I suppose. That's about the only splash damage thing for anti-air. However, he does have quite a few air defenses coming in, and they are slowly but surely taking out that Banshee horde. More, ba Actually, more Rapiers coming in, as well as the Banshees. The Rapiers will be a bit more effective against those air units, but even then, I'm still a bit surprised he's not building more Tridents. Okay, I'm not that surprised, because Tridents are a new unit, kind of untested, hard to say how effective they are against air. They are meant to be effective against air. There is one of them actually in place, and it is doing a decent job. Wait, did I totally miss that this entire time? I apologize, because that appears to actually be doing a great job at clearing the skies enough of these Banshees. Well, an okay job. The Banshees are still half dead. But it is in place. One Trident in place, and a bunch of Rapiers to help support it. But the Banshees doing the job. They're much better, harassing to the north. And as we see El Toro going to the east side of the map, he should be going basically into the main base. Of the well, actually, no, not quite in the main base at this point. There are still more jump bots coming in. The Pyro's... No, I actually should go to the main base. This area, while decently well defended, will probably fall to the dozen Ravagers coming in. Jack getting rid of the commander, not the biggest loss. El Torero, well, actually he has 20 metal economies, so that is a decent loss. Reclaiming what he can, and definitely taking it, well, taking some metal off that. Sackdoth, however, is once again pushing into the lead, reclaiming all of the metal extractors he had towards the southwest, and the Ravagers are going for the main attack. They are doing a pretty decent job getting rid of some of the metal extractors over to the west of Saktoth's main base. And getting rid of the defenses that are bu built up. The Stardust going down and everything else is going to go down. This entire base is done for. 
Sagdoth losing his main base while El Torero continues to fly in units. The Rapier is doing what they can to take care of everything here, but they aren't quite as effective as Banshees at the harassment game, and the Banshees appear to be pretty much gone. Not bad for support, but they are pretty much gone. The Raptors taking out this base, and there goes that jump jet plant. So, very nice move by El Torero moving those Ravagers in there. Sacktoth losing his main base and most of his energy economy while trying to support it with the gunships with the rapiers, but at this point it's too late. His main base is gone. Not completely too late for the game, though. Sacktoth still has an economic advantage. He's still in this game. Don't count him out yet. The gunship plan is still going to be effective enough. I wouldn't... I would think building Banshees wouldn't be a bad idea, though. The Rapiers, if he gets enough of them, they will be able to take out what is here. The Rapier, see, the Ravagers are trying to hit them, but they're just moving too fast. They're dodging the shots coming in. The Ravagers, if they try to go for a clump of them, which rarely form, but, I mean, they could get lucky. But basically, the Ravagers are just going to fire into the sky and hit themselves, or hit each other, rather, as the shells go to the ground. Those Rapiers are taking care of the Ravagers. Still, it's a bit late. Now, Crash is coming in here. This is not a... This is... Well, I suppose it's really what you'd recommend. Slashers are good for anti-air. Well, multi-purpose, but... Crashers don't need to deploy first. So, at this point, Sacktoth is going to be going for the air. And probably going to go back to Banshees for... Well, actually, I don't think he's going to go back to Banshees. I think he's going to actually start building up another factory. Possibly Shieldbot. Not sure exactly which, though, because... At this point, he pretty much has any option. Actually, at this point, Shieldbot might even be a bad idea. Given the gunship support on most of the light attack, I'd almost... Well, heavy tank... No, heavy tank would be a bit too much. U utility might... Actually, I don't know. If he comes in here with a heavy tank factory, just comes in with a couple Reapers, that would just tear apart everything. Bit of a risky move, though. I wouldn't recommend it. I still think Shieldbot would be a solid choice. It usually is. I mean, I suppose he could continue with his cheeky streak and go for spiders and... I guess come in with a couple crabs coming in from the backside. Try to hurt, just not even bother to harass. Go for a, a straight up attack from behind. It's a possibility, though probably too well defended to actually be useful. If the rapiers came along behind and actually, the rapiers could actually do this too. They come along. Well, no, they can't do it for long. There's too much in the way of anti-air defenses for that to be effective. But Sagnot did push back El Torero's forces. He is rebuilding. He is building up. No factories. Fusion plant in the main base right here and. Otherwise, not really getting too much. Trying to go for that harassment I mentioned with the Rapiers. He is not going to be able to do this for very long. Too much anti-air in place. Doing what it can, and we'll be able to deal a fair amount of damage. EMP Bomber hitting the Rapiers in mid-air. Taking out half the base here. Taking out half the anti-air forces, but still knocking out some of the Rapiers. And forcing Sagtoth back. Taking care of the rest of them. And the remaining Rapiers, actually, only one of them going down, surprisingly enough. Another EMP Strike. Taken out before it's complete, before it even hits the rapiers. I'm not sure why I went for the EMP bombers on the rapiers. It kind of worked the first time because they were in a position where it would. But yeah, that was bizarre. Amusing, but kind of bizarre. Regardless, Sackdoth has been pushed back. Still has the economic advantage, but both players reclaiming so much that it almost doesn't matter. Though Sackdoth floating much less, he... What is he building? Okay, just building gunships at a massive... Well, one caretaker... He does have another caretaker that's pushing all these metal extractors and a fusion reactor. Which is definitely helpful. Though these metal extractors aren't overdriving very much at this point. While in the center of the map, El Torero not really building up too much. I, I'm a little bit surprised neither player is going too much for another factory. I mean, I know El Torero, no, he shouldn't go for another factory. He doesn't have the economy for that. Sacked off on the other hand. He does have the economy for that. He is floating and he is... Not doing much with that cash. I don't see him rebuilding any other factories. He's he's really focused on these gunships. He really likes those gunships. A little bit surprising, but they have been paying off. I mean, I cannot fault him for that. They have been working. And there we go. A pretty stock Clokybot factory being built up. That is not a bad idea either. That's also good for... And like I said, getting solid units on the ground and harassment. He might go for a sniper for the utility, just going for a... That, because like I said, the rapiers are pretty good for the group fight and taking out large clumps of units, but... Welcome back, 0k fans. It's Chapter 53 once again. 
Apologizing once again for another crash. I'm still not sure what's the problem. PSU might have gone too hot. Don't know. CPU might need thermal paste reapplication. Re we'll try that. But for now, let's finish this game. Hopefully this is not going to be too much longer. So, to recap, we had... Between the last time, so Saktos had just lost his main base, so he's been doing a really good job rebuilding it. Lost his main base to a bunch of Ravagers, managed to push them away with a bunch of Rapiers, and El Torero doing what he can to try to secure the center of the map, but Saktoth has rebuilt basically everything from El Torero's harassment. Still kind of expensive, but El Torero didn't manage to really capitalize on that. He surprisingly hasn't been using a lot of his air units for anything other than defense. Apart from a couple napalm bomber strikes in the beginning, he could get around this all these metal extractors and harass them very easily and very directly. He's not doing so, however. Anyway, get the game back started. So, Saktoth continue to push back El Torero, but El Torero does have some anti-air in place to deal with them. Doing a pretty decent job, too. And the rapiers, however, are probably too numerous. More anti-air coming in, adventure coming in, getting taken out by the chainsaw. And a bunch of rectors, about a dozen rectors, were built up from the Klogobot factory, and more sides, or sides are starting to be built up. Sorry, not sides. Yes, I mean sides. I get confused between glaives and sides, because sides wield glaives, and glaives wield plasma rifles. So really, the naming's all off. Although I do like the theme naming of pole arms, despite the fact that halberds are in the hovercraft factory. Yeah, not sure about that one. In fact, I think it's only the glaives and the sides that have the pole arm theme. Everything else is different. But, theme naming aside, El Torero setting himself up, getting some reclaim going, and setting himself up with a bunch of Ravagers for yet another strike, possibly the final strike. A little bit surprised he's not going... Actually, no. Actually, I'm a bit surprised he's not going for this directly. And Heavy Tank Factory was built by Sackdoth. Tremor being built up. Heavy Saturation Artillery will be able to take care of pretty much everything here, and... These Ravagers need to get out of the way. They could attack directly and get through it, but that... Probably didn't expect that. It's still a very good use... I mean, that's the only thing the Heavy Tank Factory can do. And Banishers are coming in as well, the Riot unit for that factory. A little bit surprised no Reapers are coming in, because Reapers, they might be coming in later, but they would basically just one-hit everything in this base and tear apart El Torero's base. Sackdoth, however, going around here and will be coming in for another strike. A bunch of sides coming in just to tear apart what he can. So, direct attack on the Tremor with sides coming in for harassment in the back. And the Tremor completely nullifying this front base, moving in forward, avoiding any resistance. And any resistance that might come up getting taken care of by the Rapiers. Crash is doing what they can to get rid of them, but still the Ravagers can't easily come into position. Some of them are coming into position, but the sides will take care of them before it becomes a problem. And the Banisher will... If, if the sides don't, the Banisher certainly will. And there they go, the sides are taking out those Ravagers. The rest of the Ravagers, however, coming in towards the southeast, taking care of what they can, and taking care of it pretty well. But this is not still going well for El Torero. Saktoth moving his size into the main base and going for it looks like a frontal assault with size being a cloaked assassin unit. This is, well, almost, an, almost a bit of a cherry tap. Not quite an insult, but still kind of cheeky. And the Tremor, however, is really the thing leading the charge and getting nice little saturation assault here. However, getting stopped by an EMP bomber, which in turn is going down. Still, that was a good shot. The Tremor will be able to go down to this Ravager. It has four seconds left on the EMP, three seconds left, and it's going to go down. The Crasher in place to harass away, and that is gone. The Banisher, however, still able to stop more units from... Dealing with what's here. Another Banisher coming up. Not sure if Reapers are in queue. No, they aren't. Copperhead's in queue, however. And it doesn't matter. El Torero is going down. That is the game. So I hope you enjoyed that. And that'll be it for tonight. I really am kind of sick of dealing with these crash bugs, which will probably keep coming. Not crash bugs, sorry. The, my hardware issues, which probably keep coming up. So that'll be it for tonight. Hope you enjoyed this games. In spite of the technical issues. And have a good night, everybody.